In Jannah, there are certain things that we say and we don't even think about. Now, obviously, you're going to want to listen to the dhikr of the angels. And, you know, I often think to myself, what would it be like to actually hear Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu read the Qur'an, for example? When the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever wants to hear the Qur'an fresh like the day it was revealed, let them listen to Ibn Mas'ud. So walking up to Ibn Mas'ud and saying, can you read some Qur'an to me the way you read to the Prophet ﷺ? Or maybe the Prophet ﷺ himself. And you have the dhikr of Dawood and the glorification of the angels and all of that. But what about your own dhikr in Jannah? What do you sound like? What comes to you naturally in Jannah as you're seeing all of this beauty? Now there is our dhikr in this dunya, and what does it lead to? We already have covered that. The value of one tasbih is greater than the kingdom of Sulaiman You're planting trees and you're seeing every single tree. And maybe as a gift to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even reminds you, remember when you said this subhanAllah, here it is now. Remember when you said this alhamdulillah, here it is now. So you're seeing the fruits of your dhikr that you made in this dunya. And the Prophet ﷺ said, for example, that لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no power or might except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a treasure from the treasures of paradise. And he said وسلم, that it is written under the throne of Allah. And this phrase, Safan ibn Sulaym radiallahu anhu said, no angel has risen from the earth until he said, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. And every time you leave your home, you say, Bismillah wa tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So this is a treasure of paradise, the Prophet said. But in all reality, everything from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a treasure in paradise. And that's why Imam ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah, he said, Fasri' bi akhdi ma khaffa wazanu wa ghala thamanu. So rush towards those things that are lightweight but heavy value. What does he mean by that? Dhikr is a steal in this dunya of a deal and how much it benefits your Jannah. You literally dedicate a few moments, a few breaths, and you have palaces and gardens in Jannah. And he's saying, if you're trying to steal from a house, though we would never steal from a home, I hope none of us would steal from a home, you look for the things that are lightweight, high in value. And he says, Dhikr in this life is like a steal. Just say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah, Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Keep yourself busy with these athkar and the best form of dhikr, La ilaha illallah. But that's all here and you see the result in Jannah. What about dhikr you make in Jannah? Now again, you don't have to do anything in Jannah. But what we learn from our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that acts of worship are suspended in Jannah except for the dhikr of Allah, which continues. The Prophet ﷺ said that the people of paradise will eat and drink and they will not blow their noses or relieve themselves or urinate. Their food will be digested in the form of belching and sweating like the fragrance of musk. And they will be inspired to tasbih and tahmeed, subhanAllah and alhamdulillah, the way that you naturally breathe. And the Prophet ﷺ said, they will glorify Allah morning and evening. SubhanAllah. So in Jannah, just naturally, you're saying SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. You're looking around and it's like you're breathing because you used to do it so frequently in this dunya and because just everything in Jannah just inspires a form of dhikr. Like what else are you going to say when you see those beautiful animals and those beautiful palaces and those rivers? SubhanAllah, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. And what did we already learn from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the people who remember Allah, will be the first people to enter paradise. They are Al-Hammadun. And they're literally the opposite of the last people to enter paradise who are Al-Jahannamiyun. The people of praise enter paradise first. And the people who just get pulled in are people that were maybe stingy with their dhikr. But we are not a people that are stingy with our dhikr. And when we are used to it here, we will be even more used to it there. And Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah, he said, this tasbih in Jannah, it's not a matter of obligation or being imposed on you. It's what Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that they will be inspired with tasbih and takbir just like they breathe. And he said that the analogy of breathing is because it's something that a person does with no conscious effort. So your breathing in Jannah becomes tasbih. And the reason for this 
is that the hearts will be illuminated with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and filled with so much love for Him. And whenever you love something, you frequently remember it. So you're just thinking of Allah and saying, Alhamdulillah, all these amazing things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us and given to us. Shaykh al-Islam and Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said that this tasbih and takbir is one of the pleasures of the people of paradise. It's not like one of the obligations or deeds that are done because you're trying to attain a specific reward. It's the same thing that people do for pleasure and enjoyment in Jannah. So you're saying dhikr and you're enjoying your dhikr in Jannah even more so than you enjoy sipping wine in Jannah. And what are they saying? SubhanAllah, there's something very beautiful here, by the way, that the Alhamdulillahs of Jannah are connected to things, right? They're connected to very specific things that you're thanking Allah for. And we're taught to do that here as well, right? So when you eat, Alhamdulillah ladhi at'amani hadha, all praises be to Allah who fed this to me. Or when you dress yourself, you say, Alhamdulillah ladhi albasani hadha thawb, all praises be to Allah who provided me this garment. So you say, Alhamdulillah, as a believer in this life, and you attach a reason to why you're saying Alhamdulillah. In Jannah, what are you saying? Alhamdulillah ladhi adhaba anna al -hazm. A moment goes by and you go, all praises be to Allah who took away sadness from us. Like I'm not sad anymore. I don't have any trauma. I don't have any worries. I'm not concerned about anything. Alhamdulillah ladhi adhaba anna al -hazm. And then you look around and you see some of the things that you've earned in Jannah and you realize that you couldn't have earned these things by your own affair, because you guided yourself. So you say, Alhamdulillah ladhi hadana li hadha, wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. All praises be to Allah who guided us to this. We would have never been guided to this had it not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you look around and you see something that you remembered, you were promised in this dunya. You say, that's exactly what I learned about Jannah. And it's happening here. And I remember when I was tempted to forsake my principles and almost lose my paradise. But Allah's promise was true. And you go, Alhamdulillah ladhi sadaqna wa'ida. All praises be to Allah who is truthful with His promise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the choice to take from Jannah whatever we want. Whatever we desire is now at our disposal in Jannah. And the last person to leave hellfire and enter into Jannah, what does he say? Alhamdulillah ladhi najani mink. He looks back at hellfire and even he, the first thing he says is, Alhamdulillah, all praises be to Allah who saved me from you. So it's a lot of SubhanAllah, it's a lot of Alhamdulillah, it's a lot of La ilaha illallah, it's a lot of Allahu Akbar. And how many times do you put your head down in Jannah? and go, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises be to Allah, who granted us this amazing gift, even though we were totally undeserving of it.